This is Daniel Hall, Panola College. Today we are going over reinstalling a piston on a Predator 212 uh, along with the crankshaft and cam assembly. First we're going to start with a clean engine. Make sure that your interior of your cylinder surface here is clean. Interior of your block is clean. Wipe down your piston, especially the skirt. So this is the piston skirt. Uh, and top of the piston, make sure all that is free of any kind of debris and your bearing surfaces as well. So in both areas. Now you have an arrow on your piston. This arrow points down. There is an oil drain hole here that also points down. And of course when you reinstall this, you have this oil slinger arm that is designed to scoop and sling oil all over the block. It actually slings oil all the way up through this channel where your push rods go and lubricates the top end of your valve train and then it all drips back down. So although it's just one little skinny piece of aluminum, it does quite a good job getting everything stirred up in there. So to install the piston, you'll use a piston ring compression tool. This is simply just a metal strap that it can be cinched down. So first you'll open it up by depressing the lever, going over your rings. Before you go over your rings, make sure you have, you have a gap in your ring here. You have two rings and an oil ring. So two compression rings, there's a gap there, and what you want to make sure is that the opposite ring, they're 180 degrees apart, so I'm going to roll them. So now my gap is here on this ring, on the top ring, on the second ring it's over here. My oil ring is continuous the way it's designed. Oil ring has this little waffle cone shaped uh, wire in it designed to trap oil and deposit it up and down the cylinder bore. The other two rings, one is a wiper ring, so your black one here in the middle is designed to scrape that oil off that the oil ring just put on, and then your compression ring on the top is to seal the gases uh, from blowing by into the crank. So once you know those rings are opposite each other, it doesn't matter which orientation you do, just make sure they're 180 degrees apart so that it seals the best. You're gonna put your compression sleeve over it, you have a square headed tool here that comes with this sleeve. It's ratcheting and you cinch it down. Make sure that you, about halfway down the piston, that you're encapsulating all of those rings and get it as tight as you can by hand. Because what you want to do is when you look up in here, it should be cinched down and squeezing those rings. Now, again, I'm making sure my arrow is pointing down. I'm then going to take a little bit of oil, lubricate my sidewall of my cylinder, maybe put a little bit on my skirts, just so once we get it going it doesn't have any friction and your goal is to do this in one smooth, one to two smooth uh, hits. You don't want to have to sit there and beat on it or you'll end up damaging a ring. So there's a very, very small uh, camphor here uh, on the edge, and if that's your only saving grace, there's some edges that have a lot more. The bigger that bevel is, the easier this process is. But first, once you sit, seat this down, again, making sure your arrow inside there is pointing down, you're going to take and walk your dead blow around the edge, because if you'll notice here, this is not even all the way around. So what you want to do, now that whole, because it's, it's about three wraps of this steel band. Now they're all flush, which means they're flush down here. And it should be a seamless transfer from this cylinder to the new cylinder. And the rings just slide right in and expand down here. If they pop out in this gap, you'll feel it hit like a brick wall, you do not want to strike it again because then you'll damage your ring. So it should be smooth with not a lot of uh, friction or feedback when you're doing this. Now, piston hammer is designed for you to lose, use the long end of the nose to strike this. However, with these small pistons, it's hard to hit the hole evenly without missing and hitting the side and you know, have them start all over. I prefer, I, have, I feel like I have better control if I actually use the handle. So I'm going to make sure I'm holding my sleeve against 
squarely against my surface of my head. I'm going to place my handle in here. I'm going to use the, the tool as a guide so I don't miss. I'm just going to come up to the top of that guide. Okay. Was not successful. And the reason I know that, I felt a hard stop. If you look, I had a ring pop out. So, this is common. You just re take it back out. If you feel a hard stop, you know you got a ring that popped out. The smaller these pistons are, the more finicky they are. There it went. So, once you have a good smooth strike and the rings didn't expand on you, uh, the faster the better. That's why it's actually best if you use the long nose of this handle and, and swung at it, but I always have students that end up striking the tool and it's, it's just a hard target to hit because it's so strong. And once you get up to a bigger piston, like an automotive sized piston, no big deal. So now what you want to do is push that piston back out, but don't come all the way out. So I just set my hand here, I push up to about an eighth to a quarter inch below deck. That gives me enough room to work inside. Again, I've already checked that I'm clean of debris. All that is good, so now I'm ready to reinstall my crankshaft. Again, wipe down, make a check for dirt, uh, especially on this bearing surface. Any Anything right there that you trap in this next step, will act like a piece of sandpaper and grind its way in.